What's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today I'm reviewing the Nike Blazer Mid 77 Vintage. So on social media, this shoe has been gaining a ton of popularity as being like the next Converse. So the next shoe that's good for daily wear and also wearing to the gym while also delivering like a really good appearance. And so my curmudgeon self, like I was a little reluctant to actually like them because I didn't want to just go with the flow and just like what was trendy. But overall, they have been a steady performer in the gym and on a daily wear basis. So three pros that I have with this model is that if you want this shoe, for lifting. Overall, I think you're going to enjoy the performance of this model. This model has an autoclave midsole and outsole. So basically the midsole and outsole in this model are fused together. So they move really well together. And I don't think you're gonna have any midsole breakdown in this model when training. Plus the overall stability in the shoe is pretty good across the board and they articulate better than you would expect. So when breaking in Vans and Converse, they can be a little bit stiff at times. This model's sole breaks in pretty dang easily. Like the upper does take a week or two, but the sole itself actually moves really well. So I do really enjoy that when it comes to lifting and as a whole, the midsole and outsole are pretty dang stable. So you can train heavy in them without issues of compression. The second pro that I have with this model is that it's a good daily wear and casual wear shoe as well. So if you want a model that looks good in a lot of different settings that you can wear with shorts and pants and also looks pretty good in like semi-formal wear settings. So if you are somebody who wants a shoe that you can wear on a daily basis and then to the gym, this is a good model to look into. And honestly, if you like that vintage look, then I think that's a big pro with this model. The third perk with this shoe is that it's a good all season shoe and the upper is pretty dang durable. So we have a leather and synthetic upper material here and with that autoclave midsole and outsole fusing, I think the shoe is gonna be a pretty good durable bed and this leather is pretty easy to clean if they get dirty or smudged up. And with how thick the upper is, it is a pretty good model to wear in the fall and winter on top of rocking throughout the warmer seasons. Now granted, you may run into a little bit of a heat issue if you're wearing these in the summer for longer durations because again, we do have a leather and synthetic upper that is a little bit heavier but when it comes to like being an okay all season shoe this model is a good bet to look into but now let's talk about a couple of cons i have with this shoe so two potential cons i could see folks having with the nike blazer mid 77 is number one they can be a little bit tough on the achilles when breaking this shoe in and that's always kind of the risk you run with mid and high top shoes they're not always the friendliest on the achilles especially when it comes to rub so on the internal part of the boot here we do have that synthetic and leather construction so you might get a little bit of friction there especially if you're training in these shoes and you're gonna be putting a lot of like stress on the back of the boot here. So what I would suggest is this, wear thicker and longer socks when breaking these in, that will prevent some of the rub. And also if you can, I would say wear these in like increments and then like build up to like longer duration. So when you first get these, maybe wear them for a couple of hours and then go a little bit longer, a little bit longer until they're fully broken in, especially if you do notice that you do have a little bit of Achilles rub, that can kind of prolong and save you from that annoying rub that we can get in mid and high top shoes. The second potential drawback I could see folks having with this model is the tongue construction. So we have some exposed foam here on the tongue and this is designed to be like this on purpose. It is designed to give like that vintage look. So if you look at like the product page and some of the reviews, it's like, oh, there's exposed foam. Like it doesn't seem finished. Like, no, that's like part of the design. However, I know that isn't for everybody. So if you don't like having that exposed foam look that kind of has like more vintage feel with it, that could be a turnoff for you. And that could also be a turnoff in some training context if you do have some abrasion on the tongue. So just keep an eye on that. However, I don't think the tongue is going to break down very fast, especially if you are just preventing any abrasion on it. I would also suggest not getting the tongue wet. Try to limit wearing the shoe in the rain or getting them super muddy, especially up here on the tongue, just so you don't have to go through the pain of trying to clean them. But overall, those are my two cons I could see folks having with this model. So to break down the performance of the Nike Blazer Mid 77 Vintage, I'm gonna break this section into two key parts. We'll talk about like lifting and more recreational training and then daily wear and like walking. So when it comes to lifting, this model has a few things that I really enjoy. The first aspect is the stability. So when deadlifting up to like 455 pounds in this shoe, I did not have an issue with compression. So I think for most recreational lifters who wanna use this model for some heavy training here and there, the stability should be solid across the board. I also like like this full rubber outsole with the herringbone tread. It grips the floor really well on turf, rubber gym floors, wooden platforms, you name it. You should get pretty good traction in the shoe. Another thing that I like is that the sole actually moves pretty well. And I mentioned this in the pros, but like compared to some Vans models and more specifically like the Vans Skate High that can feel a little bit clunky, especially when breaking them in, the shoe breaks in pretty easily. And things like split squats and lunges, the toe box in this shoe actually moves better than what you would expect with like a mid-top shoe that isn't exactly designed 
designed for training. Another subtle detail that I like about this model for the context of lifting is that the stack height isn't actually as high as the midsole like presents itself with. So if you look at the midsole here, it looks pretty thick. However, you actually sit pretty deep into this shoe. And I think that's what also helps like the articulation of the sole of this model. So in the context of like deadlifting, this model actually does have, I think a better construction geared towards that performance aspect. Now, a couple of drawbacks to this shoe with lifting is number one, it does not have the widest construction. So if you have a wide or flat foot, you may find that this shoe feels a little bit limiting. And then also it does run a little bit hot. The upper is a little bit thick, so you can get a little bit hot when wearing the shoe in the gym, especially if you're wearing thicker and longer socks. So just food for thought there if you plan to rock these in the gym, especially in like hotter gym settings. So if you're training in a commercial gym and it's really hot one day, you may notice that this shoe runs pretty dang warm. Now in the context of daily wear and walking, I really enjoy this shoe. I like the vintage look and honestly it has grown on me and I've been wearing these now with jeans and other outfits and I like the look, like I'm not a very fashion focused guy, but I do like the appearance of this model. And I also like the outsole construction, and how it grips and interacts with the ground. Another thing that I like is that the shoe can be a pretty good all season shoe. So as opposed to just having a shoe that works for the warmer months or colder months, this model can work for every season if you plan accordingly when it comes to your like sock choice and overall outfit choice. So my one drawback with this model for daily wear is the tongue construction. And more specifically, like if you're wearing these in the rain or if you're getting them excessively dirty, the tongue may be a little bit problematic to clean. So just keep that in mind and try to avoid wearing these on days that you know the weather is not going to be great. So to wrap this section up, this model has been surprisingly solid for training. So if you wanna use them for recreational lifting and some recreational strength work here and there, this model will work really well. And also I do think they are strong performers for daily wear and just general walking. So now let's answer the question, who are these actually best for? So I think if you're somebody who likes shoes like Vans and Converse, they can kind of double down as being a good daily wear and casual wear shoe, but then also a strong performer in the gym for lifting, this is a good model to look into. The sole moves really well. Overall, they're very stable. Their stack height is pretty good. And if you like the vintage look of them, I think there's a lot of novelty with this shoe's appearance. They are a little bit more expensive than Vans and Converse, but I feel like if you're investing in these, it's more like for the novelty and their ability to perform versus just because of the price point. So that being said, this model is not gonna be your best bet for versatile training, but for daily wear and for general lifting, the shoe excels across the board. And if you like their appearance, then I think they're gonna be a hit for you. When chatting on the sizing and fit in the Nike blazer mid 77 vintage most should be safe going true to size the length fits true and the width is what i would describe as like more neutral slash narrow so that being said if you do have a flatter or wider foot you may want to go up a half size in this model to be safe and if you do have like an exceptionally wide forefoot and midfoot then you may want to look into models that better fit your foot's anatomy's needs when chatting on price in this model, you can expect to pay $100 USD. Now compared to Vans and Converse, that is a little bit more expensive, especially if you want these for daily wear and lifting. However, I think if you're investing in these, it's more like for that like vintage look and feel. So I think that price could be justified, especially if you love the appearance of this model. And if you limit their wear for just daily wear and lifting, and you're not wearing them in the rain, et cetera, like already mentioned in this video, then I do think your investment should go the distance. All right guys, so in talking on the weight, heel toe drop and insole in this model, for my size 10 shoe here, we have a weight of 13.8 ounces. The heel to toe drop in this model is five millimeters, which is yes, different than most Vans and Converse that come in at a zero drop or a zero millimeter heel to toe drop. And this model does not have a removable insole. All right guys, so now let's go over the construction of the Nike Blazer Mid 77 Vintage. So on the upper of this shoe, we have a blend of leather and synthetic materials. Up here on the toe box and on the lateral forefoot slash midfoot here, we have some synthetic overlays, and then we have a leather upper throughout the entirety of this shoe. On the medial and lateral side here, we do have some jumbo swoosh branding, and then we have some Nike branding back here on the heel. When looking at the midfoot, we have 10 eyelets that run up, and then we have that tongue with the exposed foam. I kind of like the tongue because it gives this a cool like energy and vibe to it. And then we also have some Nike branding here on the front of the tongue. We do have a loop here on the tongue to prevent this tongue from rolling in laterally and medially. And then once again, this shoe does not have a removable insole. Looking at the midsole and outsole, once again, we have that autoclave construction. So this is all fused together. We have this vintage overlay here on the midsole. It gives it like this more rigid and rugged look. And then looking at the outsole, we have a full rubber outsole with a herringbone tread patterning. Outside of that, those are pretty much the biggest construction features 
features with this shoe. If you have any questions on the construction of this model, hit me in the comments below. So quick tip really fast about the Nike Blazer Mid. What I would suggest when you're putting these on and taking them off is taking out at least two eyelets. Now you can go down to three eyelets and that should give you enough clearance to put the shoe on without breaking the boot back here. But what I would suggest is not trying to force your foot in. That can ruin the boots material back here and have it crease and look kind of messed up. So at least bring down your laces two eyelets three or four to be safe and that should give you enough clearance to put the shoe on and properly lace them up all right guys that wraps up my review of the nike blazer mid 77 vintage i'm not gonna lie i was a little reluctant to like this shoe at first however it has been a really strong performer and they have steadily grown on me if you have any questions on this model drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally whichever you prefer and as always guys drop a like on the video drop subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.